Welcome back to the Swider Show. As promised, we have a guest in my boy Scotty Pippen. So Scotty, recurring guest now. Welcome back, man. I'm glad to be back, man. Appreciate you all having me back. A little bit, little bit different of a vibe in the, in the live show, huh? Yeah, different, man. I'm messing with it. I like it a lot. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, me, Patty, Adam, uh, people at Blue Wire, appreciate you coming on the show, man. But uh, how you been, man? Obviously, you uh, had, had a little had a little hiccup for, for Summer League. You, got, you had a little sprained ankle, but I'll be the first one to say that that might have been a prime Scotty Pippen, the, the practice you rolled your ankle. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, unfortunately, it's from, I rolled my ankle practice right before Summer League. You know, not ideal time to get hurt. Um, was expecting to do big things this summer, but yeah. you know, I believe everything happens for a reason. Um, I'm gonna get back healthy and just, you know, see what my journey goes from there. One thing about Scotty, and I truly believe this, is that the only thing that prevents Scotty from not playing well is just literally not being on the court. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So <laughs> you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm excited to get back eventually, but yeah, so in due time. I think uh any any listeners that are South Bay fans know that, that statement to be true. I mean we got we gotta we gotta talk about the stats that Scotty put up after he yeah. he, he, uh, well, he got to the Swider show. Before before we get into that, uh, I do want to I wanted to start with a quote from Swider last week. I was texting him about like coming out here, and everything. It's like, how's the squad looking in practice? Said uh, Scotty looks like Hornets Chris Paul in the first <laughs> <laughs> in the first practice, but he got fucking hurt. <laughs> no, that's crazy. No, it was it, it was impressive. Like, so Scotty was, was the second team at practice, and uh, I mean. The first team couldn't get a win. First team couldn't get a win. Not Scott, surprising. Scotty was overall just slicing and dicing. I mean, if if, if you watch you watched summer league last year, you watched a G League. I mean, Scotty Scotty's obviously one of the best. I think one of the best point guards in the world, being at his size and, and being able to pick up full full court defensively, being able to see the floor. I mean, in the G League, he played a little bit different than he did in summer league, but uh, I'll, I'll give him a pass for that. Yeah, no, I de definitely. Um, this summer was expecting to do big things. You know, I had a lot. Coming into this, had a chip on my shoulder, you know, being a free agent this summer. So I was excited to play, but, you know, now it's kind of. Hey, what's that mindset going into free agency, right? Because you obviously had a great year in the G League. You, you did everything that you wanted to do, right, in terms of shooting the basketball, playing playing well defensively, winning games, being the closer. Um, but what's that mindset going into free agency, and, and how do you kind of deal with that from a, I'm not on a team right now, but but the next team I'm on, I'm I'm gonna kill it and, and get back to, to where I was and even go farther. I think my mindset is just um just being ready for whatever, just making sure I'm prepared myself as an individual and you know, just making sure I'm in tip top shape, tip top, you know, everything performance wise just going in and just knowing that I'll be ready for whatever situation I'm put into. You know, I don't wanna overthink free agency that much because, you know, could, you know, that just does nothing for me, but yeah. just making sure I'm ready to go anywhere I go. That's one thing I'll give you credit for, bro. Like I I'm 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 a naturally like an overthinker, and and you'll like calm me down all the time and like yo it's not that serious. Yeah, I think you know when you don't take it as serious, it, you know it kind of helps relax you and stuff like that. So I try not to take anything too serious because at the end of the day it's just basketball. So, nah, for sure, man. But but throughout the year, I mean, we we were together a lot of the time with the Lakers, with with South Bay. We had a lot of good times, some good times, some bad times. Obviously, good games, bad games, man. We had, we had some experiences this year, man. Talk about talk about the, your your rookie year as a whole. Shit, that <laughs> shit. My rookie year as a whole, I don't know. It was a great year, um, especially being back home in LA. My first year, um, having someone like you go through this journey with me, um, man, it, it was a great year. Um, it's hard to put into words how it was. Just looking back at it, just how much fun we had, how much we grew. I feel as players off the court, stuff like that, but. No, it definitely was a great year, a lot of fun. Um, especially being at LA, being with the Lakers, being with a lot of older guys and guys, you know, we both looked up to. It was just a lot of fun, a lot of learning and stuff like that. Last time we uh talked to you was the day after you guys' first preseason game, which is crazy to think about. Damn. Think about how much it's changed since yeah. then. Yeah. I was gonna say, like what what's your take on like where you see yourself now versus versus back then? Way is that was a long time ago, I yeah. feel like it's like looking back at that. Almost like nine a, months ago, yeah. I think one thing that I've thought about a lot as the season progresses, like how optimistic you are when the season begins, right? Like, yeah. I think as a two-way player, I mean, the, the two ways told us this last year, but I told Scott, "Yo, we're gonna we're gonna play like 20, 20 30 games up top, <laughs> yeah. right?" Like, you're just so optimistic of like the opportunity that's gonna be given to you, and then, I mean, 
Scotty gets hurt a couple of times. I get hurt for the first two months of the season. We end up playing with South Bay most of the year. Mm-hmm. We get better. We get to show what we can do in the G League level, but we didn't get that opportunity to kind of showcase what we could do up top. So that's the first thing that comes to my mind when, when thinking about all the way back then after our first preseason game. Yeah, I think, like you just said, we're all very optimistic. I think, you know, once it's gone to Anderson, he kind of told me the best advice. It was like everything changed. Every day something new changed in this. So, like, every day – someone would be hurt and like I feel like Cole and I think we were going to play or like, <laughs> right. I think we we're going to get called up and it just you know never happened so I think that's something that we both grew from we both learned just you know every day just take it day by day and just enjoy this journey embrace every day for what it is and you know don't think too much about it yeah I was going to say uh I think any Lakers fan will know like last summer league you you two and Jay Huff was like a cheat code like the 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 three-way that was going on there and it's just annoying you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Patty! The three-man game that was going on there, there. there, yeah, there it recovery. Is. But uh, wow, <laughs> that was ridiculous. Hope that was no like one, some Charles Barkley yeah, type. No, uh, I hope no one heard that. Out yeah, there. but uh, I forget what the rest of my point was. Yeah. No. Oh, it just it just sucks that like I feel like you guys haven't had an extended period of time since last summer league where it's like both you guys are healthy and like you're really popping. For sure, and then like just this, I think one thing that. I was really impressed with Scotty this year was just his ability to adjust with the situation that he was given to him. Last summer league, he was like, uh, he was a point god last summer <laughs> league. Like, I'm not, uh, obviously I'm very complimentary of Scotty. And I, I told Scotty during the year, it, it, everyone everyone laughed at, at this quote, but I was like, Scotty, no one believes in your game more than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but then with the G League team, he was given a totally different role where he had to come off the bench and kind of just score for us. Like they yeah. told, like Coach Ham, our G League coach was like, just come in and, and score, like be like a Lou Will type role. And then he took that on, and averaged twenty five points a game, shot forty percent from three, and he went through a stretch of games where it was like Scotty turned into like an athletic freak. Mm-hmm. It was like hard. <laughs> 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 no, this year in the G was definitely crazy. You know, I kind of just got in the zone. Like Cole said, athletic freak. Like I started dunking on people. Like <laughs> I never was able to dunk on people. I wouldn't even try to dunk on people. Well, you can't even palm the ball. No, I can't. So <laughs> that's why I don't really that's try fine. to dunk. Yeah. But you still dunk it. No, this year definitely was crazy. You know, it was unfortunate me and Cole got, you know, some injuries and stuff like that. But we definitely had a lot of fun. We had a good team. Like you said, Jay Huff. We were definitely loaded. We should have probably won it all, but. Towards the end, guys got traded and stuff like that, so it kind of hurt us. Too. Yeah, you were hurt. Cam left. Jay left. Jay got converted to that two way. So it's tough in the G League because it's like, like you want those guys to get paid, you want those guys to get converted. Then then it leaves like our team yeah. at like a yeah. standstill. Yeah. No, yeah, it's definitely crazy. But it, we also I also felt like in the G League a lot of our other guys they got called up more. So it's definitely yeah. unfortunate to see that people didn't get called up as much as we would have hoped to see them go. But for sure. For sure, man. I, I think we learned a lot though. Like just having like guys like Dev Kennedy, Shaq Harrison. I felt like we kind of had those like NBA vets in the G League that could kind of give us like the like some game. Yeah, definitely. Dev Kennedy and Shaq Harrison, those are my guys. They taught us a lot. I feel like just being with them all the time in the hotel, being playing cards with them, just kicking it with them. Like I didn't, you know, when we weren't with the NBA team, we were in the G. Like I didn't feel like. You know, we were really like demoted or something. Yeah, we didn't feel like we were demoted because <laughs> yeah. we had guys that were like cool and they kind of kept us level headed. Like y'all time will come. Like they were really cool, and especially like those two guys. Like they were never on hating anything. You know, some people feel like the G League, everyone is like trying to fight for a spot and stuff like that. But I feel like we had a good team. Guys, guys were never hating. Guys were always there to support each other and just look out for each other. Especially those two guys, just having guys that had played in the league and kind of would give us game. For sure, man. So Scotty, I want to talk about the pickup runs with the Lakers when me and you were obviously there for the playoffs. And uh, and I want to hear some, some because obviously you have a day with uh, with Pat Bev on your team. You guys going back and forth. You have a day going back and forth with with all the, all those, all the, all the players, honestly, with D-Lo, mm-hmm. <laughs> you and D-Lo having conversations on the bus. Well, give me some, give me just like some stories, some experiences from your first year that were either funny and that were like, that that, help, that that you felt like help help you grow as a player. Yeah, I think like you just said, those pickup games and practice was 
those are basically games for us. I feel like when we would get caught up with the Lakers, yeah. I had a lot of experience with those. I think me and you definitely were going there trying to kill with the right mindset because that was basically Hell. our game and our opportunity to show that, you know, we belong, we played there. Um, but a lot of funny stories with Pat Bev, D-Lo, all of them, because, you know, they were going there thinking it was going to be sweet and we were trying to go in there, you know, kill them. So, so Pat Bev didn't really play in those runs at all, but when he got suspended for those three games after shoving Hell DeAndre yeah. Ayton, I was actually hurt at the time, but but Scotty Scotty was playing and Scotty was killing. Like I remember, wa- I remember watching it, and uh, Pat Pat was going at another one of our teammates because Scotty was killing him. Yeah, Pat's funny, man. Pat talks a lot of shit though, so it's always good to have him <laughs> on your team. He always, you know, gets whoever he's going, and even if he has, you know, a team that's outnumbered or like, you know, you could tell the team's unfair. Like he'll talk his way into somehow being in the game. It's the weirdest <laughs> shit. Like. I don't know. He just like I remember like even in preseason, it was like the second unit and like even me is like I'm like third unit. Where it's like the stars on the Lakers and somehow like he talked his way into us being in the game and I felt like confident that we could beat them and yeah. stuff like that. So. I remember Scotty say to preseason, like, yo, if Pat's on your team, like like you're gonna win. <laughs> yeah, it was the weirdest thing. Like he was getting offensive rebounds and stuff, and like but he's the smallest over guy AD, on the team. Like over like A D. Yeah, no, nah, it was wild. But no, nah, Pat's definitely a competitor, so it's definitely good to have him on your team. <laughs> Remember when he told us he was the the greatest guard offensive rebounder of all time, and we're like, "Yo, how do you do that?" He's like, "Just a little will." <laughs> yeah, he he lies a lot of a lot of that. <laughs> he came in the locker room one time and told me his what his wingspan was like, like seven one. Yeah, like what? <laughs> yeah, you and we're like, put your arms easily. out. He's like, like there's no way he said what he's like. It feels like it though. <laughs> yeah. Like- <laughs> oh man. Nah, definitely. I, I mean, I have so many good stories of, of those guys throughout the year. I mean, even like, like in the playoffs, I feel like we, we were able to ca- kind of get close to like AD and Braun and, mm-hmm. and Dennis, Dennis for sure. Like De- Dennis would look out for us a lot. Um, <laughs> they would have like those big Blu-ray table games where they're playing for a lot of money. And then Scotty and I and Max and, and, and LeBron's uh, manager, Mo Bamba, like we'd be playing like $10 hands, $20 <laughs> hands. And they're over there playing for... A good chunk of change. Yeah, um, in the playoffs, I won a lot of money off course. So I, so <laughs> he, he can tell you about that. So, how do those card games work? Are you guys playing like every day on the road? It depends. I feel like in the in the hotel, like it's either only a couple things you could do because, like, especially during the playoffs, you're not like they don't really want you going out right. like that. And it's like, especially in Memphis, like, so it was funny. I was I, I watched a bunch of podcasts and stuff like that. So we we stayed in downtown Memphis at this Hyatt. And they had like a really cool like upstairs spot for us to hang out. So I was watching the Pete, the Paul George podcast, uh, and Jaron Jackson was talking about like the spot to be at is at this Hyatt like really? rooftop. <laughs> we were like, <laughs> "Are you kidding me? Yeah, like, you're that's coming from there, LA? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's all there is in Memphis." Yeah, like that was like that was it. Like that was some spot we just had every day, like in the hotel chilling, like yeah, because we had nothing else to do. But you yeah, know th- those like in those playoff runs though, like people forget like we're in those cities for like five six days. Mm-hmm. Especially like the, the first round, we had like two days off in, in San Francisco. We had two days off in uh, Memphis. We were like five, six days in those cities, like trying to figure out what to do. Like Scotty and I were going to the gym extra with Phil and, and, and J.O., Jordan Knott, one of our assistant coaches, and, and just like grinding. But it's at the same time, it's like, yo, like, what are we like? Yeah, because you guys aren't really like practicing during the playoffs, right? So we'll go through like walkthroughs and we we'll go through like really like detailed scouting reports. But I mean, the roles that me and Scotty, or Scotty and I had in the playoffs weren't weren't like crazy in terms of scouting report. I remember that like the first practice in the playoffs, we were like on the scout team. I think you were, who were you, Ja? Yeah. And I was Jaron Jackson Jr. And then realistic. Yeah, exactly. And then after that, like they just put the coaches as as, as the scout team. <laughs> yeah, I don't feel like I was the biggest adjustment. Like, especially being in the league, like you don't understand how much free time you have. Yeah. Cause like, especially like in college, like you go to class, you go to study hall. Like when you, like especially like even in the summer, like you go work out for like two hours a day, like you have the whole day. And like, I used to be so bored. Like even though I was at the home, I was in LA, I had friends, I had my brother with me, but like, you're so bored. So like, even on the road, it's even worse. It's so like, you go to practice, you go to shoot around and it's like, you have the whole day to yourself. You can't like, you know yeah i tell people all the time it's like the nba is like how do you stay out of trouble when you don't have when you, when you don't have anything like an obligation because like let's say like if you're working out four hours a day that's like a lot right if you're in the gym from 9 a.m to 2 p.m 
which which we will be on a practice yeah, day. Yeah. Like you still have ten hours yeah. to do as you please. Like the the normal person is working from eight a.m. to five p.m. Shout out, shout out, shout yeah, out, Casey. Of course. <laughs> but uh, like you don't really have a lot of time after that to like just right. Go, like you go home, make dinner, maybe yeah. maybe watch a game. That's when uh, that's when you start a podcast. <laughs> exactly. But uh, that's the reason why I started a podcast. I, we we were there in August. <laughs> I was working. I was working out for like what, like nine to two, and and at that time, like Scotty was out in, in staying with his dad, like an hour and a half away. So I was just chilling in the room for like ten hours. Right. Like and Cole doesn't play video games. So I feel like that's the main thing. Like yeah. early on, like I'll play video games and stuff like that to buy time. But Cole doesn't play video games. What's your man. game? I play Call of Duty, Two K, UFC, Madden. Hey, you play with yourself in Two K? No. Hey, tell him your name and uh. When, when you guys play Warzone, you guys play groups. So what, what do they call you? Uh, El Capitan. I'm the captain on the team. I'm good at Warzone. <laughs> I usually always carry my team, so that's what they call me. It's so funny because then it started becoming a nickname in the G League too. So, <laughs> so every single time in the fourth quarter, you know where the El ball Capitan? was going. Yeah, El, El Capitan. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was funny though. Shout out my guys in the G League. It's funny because like LJ is obviously Spanish. So <laughs> yeah, he, he put the accent behind it and everything. It was great. No, that was funny though. For sure, man. Um, I mean, I think we'd be remiss if we don't talk about LeBron, right? Yeah. Like his greatness. You're obviously a son of, of greatness, right? Yeah. You, you grew up in greatness. Um, is there any similarities that you can take from your dad and LeBron? Is, is there anything that you took from LeBron this year that, that really opened your eyes that you, you didn't think would happen before? Because obviously like you grew, you grew up in greatness. You, re you really didn't get to see your dad like play as much. Yeah. But you were able to kind of see like how people react to him in public, mm -hmm. like the the public icon that he was with, with him and Michael Jordan being the best two, probably the best two players in the world at the time, mm -hmm. um, and how people react to him. Is there any similarities that you can take from your dad and, and LeBron, or any similar language that that he might tell you that and then LeBron told us? I don't know if I could like pinpoint something, but definitely I've seen a lot of similarities between the two of them. Um, I don't know. I feel like the biggest thing I saw about LeBron was his approach to the game. Yeah. Um, you know, growing up seeing someone like that's idolized and stuff like that, and being like up close and personal and every day is like crazy. Just seeing, you know, I feel like people just see LeBron, they just think he is who he is because like he was just born that way. They don't actually think like he puts in that much work. He don't care that much about his body. Like he really does that. Like, he does that shit every, every single day. day. Every and, like, day. People get that confused and like even after the games, like he's still like on his shit. Like he's always on his routine. And like if you if you throw him off his routine, like he won't let you like. He'll hold the plane up before, like he don't get the ice in <laughs> his side. You know what I'm saying? So just seeing his approach to the game was definitely eye opening to me. And then just seeing like him outside of basketball, like how crazy people go over him because like you know I grew up with my dad and stuff, and like people always come up to my dad for pictures and stuff. But like I feel like LeBron, like that's like just crazy. Like even guys on the other t on our team, like AD Russ, like they're famous, they're famous too. But like he's on a whole another level. Like people will see like Russ, AD, and be like, oh, it's Russ and AD. But then once like LeBron walk in, like people go crazy. I, I tell people like when LeBron walks into place, he stands up, like yeah. a, or everyone stands up around him mm -hmm. and takes out their phone. Yeah, it's like there's there's few people like that, like like maybe Drake, like how many people in the world are really like that where people are like crying when they see him? Yeah, no, people go crazy over him, so that's definitely it was cool to see and be close with. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I just think. Like Scotty said, his overall approach to the game is just unbelievable. Just not even like the at this point in his career, not even the on court work. Like the on court work, like it's nothing, nothing that we haven't seen before. Like we, mm -hmm. we we've been around great trainers our whole entire lives, and and Phil obviously has worked out both of us, and we and we kind of see what what he does on a day to day basis. But to me, it's 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 the sleep, it's the it's the diet, it's the recovery boots. No matter where we are, yeah. Like we'll be in film for thirty minutes, and he has. He has the recovery boots on. It's like, like every single minute is taken advantage mm -hmm. of, and then then he's pointing out every single play on, on the film, like, <laughs> yeah, like with the recovery boots on, like, killing four birds with one stone. No, dude, it's definitely crazy. I feel like he, when he's on autopilot though during the season though, like he has his routine, he has his people that set up everything, so just, he just kind of moving with the flow. So. Oh, 100 percent. I mean, like, it was hard for me to believe that he actually puts what would it say 1.5 million into his body every single year. Yeah, something like that. But like I can see it now though. Yeah. No, it's definitely that's definitely a lot of money though, but <laughs> I mean you gotta think about like he also makes a lot of money. Sleeps in a cryo tank. Yeah. Yeah. 
No, he definitely tastes like sleeps here stuff. Cause like I sleep a lot too, like taking naps and stuff like that. So I, even in the summer, like I asked him about that, like taking naps. He told me he goes to bed at like nine o'clock and then wakes up at like four, and then takes like three hour naps and stuff like that. So hearing that was like, bro, what? Yeah. <laughs> So you think like at this age he might be like you know like not trying to get away from that he has kids and stuff like that he might be trying to go out and like you know dinner and stuff like that but like he's really like locked in that's wild bro yeah that's crazy and then like i've never seen someone with that much energy at that age bro remember in the preseason when, when we were at that shoot around and he was just like going crazy just hyping everyone up like and you're like yo bro like what are you doing bro he's like bro i gotta do this to get ready for the game <laughs> Yeah, he has like crazy energy. Like he'll come into the gym like windmill and dunking and stuff like, and like nobody else is doing. It. Even the young guys are like, bro, what's this dude on? The young guys are like falling over, like sleeping. This dude bronze coming in, just like dunking shit. Like, 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 what is this, bro? Yeah, like fucking around, being childish and stuff too. Yeah. Like he really is like a kid at heart, though. You could tell like, he's very like. Is he funny? Yeah, he actually, like in the locker room. And shit? Oh, I, I, t- I tell, I tell people like, LeBron. He can code switch so fast. So like he'll be talking to me and Scotty, be messing around with us. What talking about? Like, like he'll talk about like messing around with his boys in high school, like some high school story. Be be laughing, joking around, and then right when he steps into the press conference, <laughs> back back to being professional. Yeah, no, he definitely does that a lot. But he also like he also like clowns and stuff like that. Like I don't like people don't probably think he does that, you know. But like I feel like once you've been in the NBA for so long, like you kind of. Adjust to your group and adjust to your crowd. Right. I think All right, Scotty, you can you can tell the haircut story. <laughs> uh, what was that? Memphis, that was Denver. Not uh, Golden State. <laughs> so Golden State, but did I be really, like expose to somebody at the same time though? Well, but I, I can tell. I mean, <laughs> so so basically, I, I got a haircut in Golden State. I asked for the wrong haircut. It wasn't even his fault. Oh, I remember I, that. I asked for the wrong haircut. I got it too short up top. I I, I got it faded too much. Uh-huh. <laughs> So Scotty, so Scotty sees it and doesn't say anything to me. I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. I, you know, <laughs> I see Cole with a bunch of different haircuts. So when I saw the haircut, I didn't think there was anything wrong with it. So, so I, I walk out. I walk outside, and so LeBron is a shooting coach. Name is Damian Jones. Right. He's probably one of the funniest guys we've ever <clears throat> we've ever met. Like, yeah, he's, he's a character. We became super close. Me and Scotty became super close with mm-hmm. him like throughout the year. He sees me. He's like, "Damn, <laughs> what do you ask for?" I'm like, oh, I thought I thought this looked good. You know what I mean? At first, I thought it looked good. So now I'm going to the bathroom, I'm like looking at it or whatever. I'm like, okay. I mean, I, I see what he's talking about, but I mean, I still think it like it looks okay. No one's really said anything to me yet. Yeah. So then, like, I don't I don't see anybody for the rest of the night. And the thing is, like, I saw Scotty that night. I saw like Wen Yin. I saw uh, mm-hmm. Austin. And they, they didn't say anything. They, they, right. They, they, they were letting it go. So the next day we show up to shoot around. We're playing Golden State. This is game one or two. I think it was game one. I know which cut you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so we walk in to shoot around. And LeBron's like, damn. <laughs> what happened to you? So, of course, Scotty's loving it. Scotty's loving it. Sc- Scotty's Scotty's like a clown at Harley. He's a jokester. <laughs> he wants to get everyone going. That's, that's like his thing. You know what I mean? He's like, Damn. And then the whole entire like first twenty minutes of shoot around, LeBron's going up to everyone just talking about my haircut. <laughs> it was like, and the thing is, is like people are like go back at him. I'm like, no, nah, I'm, I'm good. yeah, you're good. I'm good. I'll I'll uh, I'll just I'll, I'll take the heat. Scotty's like, come on, go back at him, go back at. Because Scotty wants to see a little something. You're right. Like, no, nah, I'm good. Bro, that shit was so funny. He <laughs> said, "Cole was like Forrest Gump, he had a military cut." Yeah. No, that was funny, bro. Cole got mad that day at me because I was laughing, but I just I couldn't control it. That shit was so <laughs> the funny. Thing is, man, like Scotty's my guy. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't save him, and that that cut was bad, and you know they was clowning him, and that was it was funny to me. So the th- the thing is though about about that is that <laughs> so Scotty and D Jones obviously like. They're both clowns. They're both like jokesters, whatever. D. Jones is coming up to me. He's like, man, it's not even that bad. I'm turning around and he's like <laughs> dancing behind me. Scotty's like, nah, 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 don't believe him, bro. Don't believe him. <laughs> yeah, then Cole got mad at me. I was looking out for him because was, he was clowning behind his back. But, and that was definitely such a funny trip for sure. But, but yeah, man, it's just like stuff throughout the NBA season. Like it can get long, get grueling. It, it can do all these things. But having like a group of guys, like even like Dennis throughout the year, like, Taking care of us, bringing us under his wing, mm-hmm. like Dennis. Dennis loves the game, Blu-ray. Like he actually loves the craft of Blu-ray. 
Yeah, he's actually like, yeah, he loves that game. It is a fun game, but no, it Dennis is. is taking it to like a whole other level. Like Dennis, he he's like he could play that game like on a plane. If we have a six hour flight, he'll play it for the full six hours, and then we'll get back to the hotel. He'll play another two hours. Yeah. What like how, how many people are playing Boo-Ray? I've never even seen Boo-Ray happen. You could play like seven, I think. I think six. But like, it's a, it's like addicting because like you could stay there and play, and like you'll lose track of time because like the game is just so fast. It's like there's no winner. Like you like constantly are winning. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like one time in the G League, we played for like eight hours straight. When we first learned how to play, we had a game. We came back to the hotel like after we shower. We literally sat there and played for eight hours. I think the craziest thing is is that you'll order two meals. Oh, you'll eat twice. Like, Hell yeah. Scotty would like order like two point. different door dashes and be like, all right, who wants uh, <laughs> some from Walgreens? It's like, bro, we've been playing that long. Have you been playing it out here at all, Scotty? Uh, we played on the plane. We haven't been playing. Yeah, we, we, we played Sacramento on the plane. Really? Scotty got hot. Really? Scotty got Have you hot. been hitting the tables at all? I did a little bit. It hasn't been treating me well. Though. Really? <laughs> no. But, yeah, out here we have the tables and stuff. I might go back. I got to try to get my money back. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, I, hopefully I can win something. But yeah, man, it's been great, Scotty. Last last question for me, Pat. If you have any more after this, I mean, you think about being a small guard in the NBA, right? Yeah. You see Fred Van Van Vliet's quote about being under six foot. You got to pick up full court. You got to shoot forty percent from three. What is going to be your mark, your sticking point in the NBA? Do you think it's picking up full court, shooting forty percent from three, playing off ball, or is it how we see you play? Right? Because I, I think. When you have a high usage rate, like it's it's a done deal. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've proven that in college, you've proven that in summer league, you've proven that in the G League, you've proven that in every AAU, whatever. Like mm-hmm. your usage rate. But what is gonna be your sticking point? What is what is is it is it what Fred Van Vliet said or, or or what do you see? Yeah, I think I definitely agree with what Fred Van Fleet said about being able to shoot and being able to guard because, you know, that's when you're that size, you have to be perfect at everything, like finishing, passing. You can't have turnovers. You can't do this. You can't do that. I think my sticking point is going to be doing whatever it takes, like anything. I'm willing to do anything. If that's, you know, defending full court, if that's, you know, just passing the ball, setting my teammates up, like I'm really willing to do anything just to, you know, make it. So I think at every level I've been at, I've been doubted. So, you know, I trust my work. I trust my grind. Um, in high school, I wasn't highly recruited. I went to college. Well, you know, I started killing, and they still doubted me. So Average 20 points a game, and they yeah. still yeah. said you weren't an NBA player. Then I went to the G League and, you know, killing. You know, I had some injuries and stuff like that, but, you know, when I was on the court, I felt like I was the best player in the G. 100%. You know, and then, you know, I felt this summer I was going to be able to show it, but, you know, God's timing, you know, and I'll be ready when I get back. For sure, man. I, and w- one of the cool things is that Scotty and, and Red Framer Lee have the same agent. I remember you said when you were on the show the first time, you said he was like a guy you model your game after. Yeah. No, definitely. You know, there's not too many small guards out here. So mm-hmm. um, seeing someone his size, especially just get paid, like how yeah, he got paid is like crazy. Unbelievable. And he's Un- undrafted. undrafted. Yeah, yeah. So, and he's not someone that like came into the league, like just, you know, launching threes or like, you know, crazy like hops or anything like that. Like he came in G, he came in guarding and, you know, just hitting shots. And that's kind of, you know, how he kind of stuck around and then eventually he got a, you know, longer leash and then, you know, got the green light to go hoop. And, you know, now he's about to get paid. Now he just got paid. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's like the next step of of your craft, right? I, I say, <laughs> I joke around with Scotty all the time. I said, the only weakness in your game is your free throws. Yeah. That, that's what I say with Scotty. But do you think like that shot making ability is the next step that you want to take, like the next step you want to take? Because that's that's obviously what's been Fred Van Viet's like, mm-hmm. Reason why he can get paid 130 million. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think just find the right system that you know believes in me, trusts in me. Because you know, I don't, I don't think that there's a certain thing I need to you know do. I, def- I definitely want to work on all parts of my game, but just being ready for whatever opportunity I get thrown into. Because you know, it only takes one team to trust in you. Because Thanks. I feel like in this thing, in this league, you could see that there's guys that can hoop that just aren't in the right system. That their coach doesn't trust them. The coach doesn't believe in them. And then they get put in another situation and they're like, oh, oh, they, they didn't know about him. But they're just like, you know, just working hard and just believing that you're being the right system. Facts, man. It's like the Miami Heat, right? Like, Heat culture. How, how many guys have they taken and like undrafted guys yeah. and, and <laughs> they end up getting paid somewhere else, but they, they, they build their their stock in Miami, man. So, Pat, you got any more uh, 
No, my only question was about uh, first of all the haircut story. I think we could have ended there. I was I was pleased after that. But <laughs> <laughs> my only question is, uh, you're the first one we've had in the show that experienced All Star Weekend. Obviously, you end up like killing for the first half of the year. But um, any cool stories from there? Any takeaways that you kind of share with us? Uh, and I had a great time. You know, it was something that I since a kid I used to always go to All Star Weekend with my mm -hmm. family and my dad and stuff. And then finally being there was like it was just crazy. It was like a dream come true. Um, I was able to bring, you know, my friends, my brothers. So just being there with them, being able to go to games, go out and network, see people. I don't think I have one story because it is like was such a right. great weekend and, you know, just, you know, full circle moment for sure. I actually have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. If you don't mind. So one thing that I don't think a lot of people see is how supportive your dad is. Mm -hmm. Like he was at every single summer league game last year. He came to a lot of our home, home G league games. Yeah. Just explain that because to me it's such a special, special thing. Like my dad came to almost every single one of my college games. Mm -hmm. um, he he played, but he obviously wasn't the player that your dad was. Talk about like that relationship, how it's grown over time, how how you've been able to kind of see that. Because to me, like he came to a G League game when you weren't even playing. Yeah, like that's how much support that that a lot of people don't see. Yeah, right. And especially like being the kind of player that he was, the, like the love that he has for his kids. Like, yeah. can you just talk about that a little bit? Cause I don't think a lot of people see that that side of him. Yeah, no, a lot of people don't see the side that, you know, my dad supports him for me. Um, you know, high school, every game, even when I went to college, like I was in Nashville, it was like a three and a half hour flight. He was at, you know, damn near every home game. And then even on the road, like he had even bought a bus, like an RV bus and was pulling up to no the game. No way. Nah, I swear. So like I, I mean, always, he has like forty siblings, so they probably were all on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you know I always have family. Like my uncles live in Chicago, so they would pull up. You know, so like my family is always at all the games, and then just being in LA, like being you know picked up back to come back to LA, like even on draft night, like seeing my dad cry, like that shit, like was crazy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like my little brother who don't even like my my one that's right under me, he don't even like watch basketball. So like you know. Seeing him cry was like crazy to me. Like that was like, you know, the best night of my life. Like seeing him, my brothers cry, my dad cry. And then, you know, being able to come back home and then see them every day. Come, my dad come to the G League games, come to the Laker games. It was like crazy because like at a certain when I was young, my dad, I would go to the games with my dad and then seeing him come. Right. Like even though I wasn't playing with the Lakers, he was still like, you know, showing up, supporting and stuff like that. It was definitely like, it's a crazy feeling to just, you know, cause I know like how proud he was of me for like making it. Cause, He's seen how much shit I had to go through just by being his son and like, you know, being doubted because of being his son and stuff like that. So Man, that gives me chills, bro. Yeah. Unbelievable. Like it was great seeing him on the sideline all the time. Like Shaq would hit a shot and like point at him and stuff. Oh, he, <laughs> he's the ultimate hype man yeah. too. Yeah, he definitely loved the G League. He loved the G League games more than you know, NBA games because first of all, they're quicker. It's easier to get in and out, and then like he also like has fun with the guys because we all be like, you know, fucking around and, and shit. And we all be talking to him and shit. Yeah, he, he's the best man. Like I like the, I, <laughs> I, t I tell Scotty this all the time. Like my, my dad has a little bit of this, a little bit, a little bit of this too. But like, he's like, yeah, that's my son. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he loves his other kids, but like, he, he loves you, bro. <laughs> yeah, nah, that's definitely funny though. But yeah, Kobe said I'm my dad's favorite. I believe it though. But yeah, he loves us all though. Yeah, nah, for sure, man. But but Scotty, great episode, man. Appreciate you coming back on. Obviously, we were able to do this live episode, and there's not a better guest to have than Scotty Pippen Jr., man. So, um, obviously, best of luck with you. You're going to come back. You're going to kill it. You're going to be healthy soon. And hopefully, we're still playing together in the in the fall and training camp, but yeah. always going to have a really big fan of me and, and obviously everyone in the Sweater Show. Definitely, man. I appreciate you guys having me. Um, glad to be on the live show, man. Yeah. It was a good time and, you know, have fun. Yeah, thanks so much, bro. That was, that was awesome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.